Okay, so um, I'm Valerie Thrasher, and this is my directing project. A lot of work was put into this. Um, there, there was a struggle. A few costume mix-ups, but here it is. A scene four of Huckleberry Finn. There weren't nothing to do but head out into the open river. The current was swift, and in a few minutes, couldn't hear the dogs anymore. Those two laid down flat behind the wigwam so as they couldn't be seen from shore, and I was in a sweat for fear they'd spy Jane, for the wigwam weren't hardly big enough to hide her. But she stayed quiet, and they were so feared for their own skins, they never thought of nothing else. So we got away all right, and finally, I judged it was safe to talk. You can sit up now. Is it safe? There's about a mile of woods between us and the dogs. Well, friend, I'm grateful to you. If you hadn't helped me out back there, I'd be one solid mass of tar and feathers by this point. But what was that mob after you for? Well, I've been selling an article that takes the tar off the teeth. And it does take it off, too. Although, generally, the teeth come out with it. So I stay in town right longer, and I ought share negligence on my pond. You should have known better. You two can't stay aboard this raft. Young man, my boy, do you realize whom you speak? N no, ma'am. Alas, that I should fall into such a company where the name and crest, the Duchess of Bridgewater, mean nothing. The Duchess of Bridgewater? Uh. Scoff, if you will. My great grandfather, the elves of all Bridgewaters, fled of this country by the end of the last century. His first son, my grandfather, was deprived of his title and the Bridgewater estates and money by the rascally second son. I am the descendant of the first son, the real Duke of Bridgewater, and heir to millions. Uh, and here I am, forlorn, born of my high estates, unto the men, dis despised of the cold world, ragged, worn, heartbroken, and degraded to the companionship of felons on the wreck. Would you deny me even that? Gee, a, a duchess. Well, I guess it's all right if you stay, but I, I... Oh, that's all right. You don't have to call me your grace. You can call me Bridgewater, and that's a privilege I only allow my friends. And I will demand no service to you, except you can give me a cushion and wait for me at my meals. Well, all right, you're, you're Bridgewater. Say, Bilgewater. Bridgewater, bridge. Water. Say, Bilgewater, it was mighty noble of you to try to protect me this way, but I think this fellow here is a good fellow, and if we're going to share his raft, I figure we should share our knowledge. Young fellow, Bilgewater here ain't the only one with a secret birth. No? No? No. Can I trust you? Sure. I'm the late Dauphin of France. What? That's right. Your eyes are looking at the poor, disappeared Louis XVI, son of Louis XVII, and Marie Antoinette. You? At your age? You mean, you're the late Charlemagne? Trouble has done it, Bilgewater. Trouble has brought these here gray hairs and premature baldatude. Your eyes are looking at the blue jeans and misery. <laughs> the rightful king of France. Gee, uh, a king. That's all right. You don't have to call me your majesty. It'll be enough to call me king. And uh, give me a cushion. King my foot? Chisel more likely. Listen, your majesty, who thought to this first? Listen, Bilgewater, what's the use of being sour? We're gonna be a long time together on this raft, and if we share this room, why not share the royalty? It ain't my fault I weren't born a king, and it ain't your fault you weren't born a duchess. So come on, Bilgewater, give me your hand. Well, all right, I could use an assistant in my theatrical enterprises. Theatrical enterprises? Well, I could use some help on the church circuit. Now come on, shake. Boy! Come here. Yes, Your Majesty? You have nothing to eat upon this clumsy craft? Uh, no, sir. Well, what's in here? Uh, nothing, Your Majesty. What of you? We have company. Who are you? Why are you here? Uh, nothing, sir. Looky here. She's just my friend, Jane. We're heading down river together. You wouldn't happen to be a runaway slave, would you? Me? No. Her? No. She's just my friend. Besides, would a runaway slave be heading south? She might be if she was going to one of them free states. Hey, King, how much do you think she'd be worth? I mean, if she was a runaway slave, of course. Uh, oh, she's not worth much. She's got the palsy. Ah, that's Dr. Palsy. It, it 
comes over her in fits sometimes. Well, that's too bad about the palsy. What's your name? Jane, Yara. I thought it was you. I've seen posters of you up and down the river. Oh, lost me. You're wanted for murder. Murder? Murder? I, I ain't murdered nobody. Yes, you did. You murdered a white boy by the name of Huckleberry Finn. You murdered him and you robbed him and you threw his body in the water. Your tracks were found on the edge of St. Petersburg. Oh, Lossy, how got you got her? Looky here. Jane ain't murdered Huck Finn. But we saw the posters. I don't care if you saw a hundred posters. Jane ain't murdered Huck Finn. You seem to know an awful lot about this. I know all about it. Because I'm Huckleberry Finn, that's why. You? Huckleberry Finn? Yes, me. I ain't murdered another. I'd been dead by a snake bite if Jane hadn't saved my life. But how did you... They think you're dead. I know they do. I fixed it so they think so. And Jane helped me. She's a runaway slave, all right, but she ain't done no murder. Rightfully, my lady, I should turn you in. Oh, no, please, sir. I'll be sold south shop. Uh, look here. If you promise not to tell on Jane, I'll... I'll... You can stay on this raft. What do you think, Billigwater? Well, it's a proposition. We could probably get $40 for her. But we have to get to town first. Boy, Jane, just ought to stay with you and your friend a while longer. Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir, thank you, sir. But, in return, you'll have to perform some small tasks for us. I would be most honored to do tasks for your most royal Right, right, right. <laughs> You can start off by scratching my back. 